All right, we are back on Sportsman Like Conduct. It's been a while. Trevor Brew, Tommy Morris on the airwaves. It's been uh, I don't know, two hundred and something days. I know. Days, I'm glad we get to bring the, the UN back. We, we we didn't have to we don't have to drop it for the political reasons anymore. We don't have to be Sportsman Like Conduct anymore. We yeah, we got like again. On Sportsman Like Conduct. Yeah, we're back. It's going to be a little different than it was before. We're doing a podcast. It's going to come out weekly, we'll be on YouTube, on iTunes, potentially SoundCloud, you know, offered as many different avenues as possible for our loyal followers. Yeah, and listeners. unfortunately, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no video right now, though. Yeah, which no is video. Because we both have very pretty faces. Faces for radio, yeah. as we like to say. But um, we got we to gotta get the following back up. You know, we were doing well a few years ago. Now we're bet down to zero, so it's uh, – <laughs> It's back to claiming only followers we're, the right way. You know? the bum, now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> we got some uh, great guests for our first show. We're going to try to do guests every week. Can't promise anything, but hopefully we will have some, oh, some great guests. I'll, just for, I'll, throw my, I'll throw my neck out there right now. I'll promise. For every week going forward. So this week we got uh, we got a whole family here. We got the Bakhtiari family. We got David Bakhtiari starting left tackle for the Green Bay Packers. We got Eric Bakhtiari newly retired but a nice little career of oh, stretching over seven seven years uh, NFL? Over six years six five years playing. five playing six years and then we got Andrew Bakhtiari played at USD I like to call him the uh the Cooper Manning of the Bakhtiari family <laughs> hey, I, do what I, I do what I can I do what I can just kidding Andrew like we, we, we love you Andrew <laughs> but yeah so we're gonna be talking about a bunch of different things pick their brains a little bit the first thing that I want to get to talk about a little bit is um, obviously the Richie Incognito, Jonathan Martin story has gone a little out of control, but um, the sound bite that these reporters got interviewing him outside his Phoenix house over the weekend is one of the funniest things I think I've ever heard, and I think it really goes to show what happens when someone's about to check them in into a mental institution. <laughs> they start talking the, the like precursors, this. Precursors, the, all the symptoms and warning signs. And we're not just talking... Like he should check himself in a mental institution because he very well did check himself into a mental institution quite soon after these comments. So we're going to take a listen to these comments and then I want to get uh, the Bakhtiari thoughts on this ridiculous statement that he had to make. Hi. Sorry, come on, come on my Sorry to bother you. Come on, it's safe. Good afternoon, how are you? Hi, I'm Nicole with Fox 10. Richard Incognito. Um, Sorry to bother you. How you guys doing? No, no worries. Um, I'm just doing my job, so... Perfect. (laughs) Um, If you don't mind me asking you some personal questions about what happened to your car. Um, Obviously, it's on TMZ, Mm -hmm. so... um, and police are saying that you admitted to to denting and taking a bat to your own Ferrari? Not at all. Uh, I'm just relaxing. I'm, uh, I'm hanging at home. It's so good to be home here in Arizona. Uh, it's so peaceful. Um, I've been training over at Exos Gym, Athletes Performance, and um, it's just really good to be home. You know, with all the, all the attention coming into town with baseball and stuff, um, <clears throat> I just thought it, I, it was best for me just to come home and, and train and have some consistency, you know, over at Exos and Athletes Performance. Um, you know, uh, when this all started, uh, it, was, it, was, it was so tough on me and my whole family because, you know, we're, we're very private people. And uh, me and my dad built and designed this house. And uh, when, um, when things went down, uh, it was just unfortunate. And, um, you know, we understand it. If, if me, my dad, my brother, my mom, my dad, Jonathan Martin, the Miami Dolphins, Stephen Ross, you, we're all brothers and sisters. Um, I think I think we all understand that it's just time to move on. You know, um, words were said, um, things were done, but at the end of the day, we're all brothers and sisters and we're here to lift each other up and we're here to motivate each other to get the best uh, out of one another. And um, that's something that my dad instilled in me a very long time ago because he's from a military background and, um, you know, we have some, some odd ways of training, but I hope everyone can appreciate that, uh, you know, my dad taught me to be a leader from the get-go. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're here, you're back here. Um, this is home for you. Yes. Um, you know, there's a lot of media and a lot of attention to, to what happened, the whole incident. And, and so what are you doing now? You're just kind of hanging out, moving on? I'm relaxing. I'm, I'm really, I'm just relaxing. I'm enjoying this nice weather. I'm going to take my dad and brother some baseball games, Dodgers, um, you know, just all over. I, I work out at Athletes Performance, and I've been there 11 years. And that's kind of like the athlete's safe haven. 
Mark Verstegen really, um, you know, his message to me back in the day was, you know, you come here, you relax, you work out, and you just focus on that. You, just, you kind of like zen out. And that's what I do here. I just come here, I relax, I work out. And um, it's, it's kind of funny because the Ferrari is a, is a story unto it itself. The Ferrari is, is one entity. But I will tell you this. Um, the Ferrari is going to be for sale through uh, my mission, which is uh, helping the Brotherhood and whatever Brotherhood it is. Um, so David Dunn, my uh, Aloha ambassador out of Southern California at Athletes First, um, I'm going to donate it uh, in his name to the Orangewood Pals of Orange County. And um, I just hope to enrich the community. Um, and, uh, you know, that's it, man. I'm just a nice guy. I'm a private person. And, uh, and now you have all these people standing on your lawn like fine. me. <laughs> Welcome. My, my, do my door is always open, as you can see. I had a friend leaving. We're trying to get the AD we're trying to get the security system figured out. The thing, I mean, if you touch the front door, it goes off. So all is well here. So Thank I have to time. ask, though, what happened? Did you With what to the Ferrari? How did it get those dents? And what was that baseball bat doing in the grill? Oh, that was that was just me venting. That was my self-expression. That was a that's a piece of art. And uh, the happiest day of my life is when I got that car. And now the second happiest day is going to be when I donate it to charity. And uh, I just, I respect you, I respect the cameraman, I respect everyone for doing their job, and I'm going to go back inside and do mine and play some video games. Okay, well, yeah, I'm sorry to bother you. Thank you so much for your time. No and, worries. Take care, man. Um, we appreciate, I appreciate it. it. No be well. Take Thank care. Thank you. It was nice well. to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you. All right, so that, uh, that audio clip we just on, listened to was uh, from Richie Incognito over the weekend talking about uh, his reasoning for denting his, his baby, his Ferrari. And uh, I just want to say, first takeaway, when you're being accused of what he's being accused of, you're going to want to stay away from the word brotherhood. Um, I think that, that's, that was questionable. probably a I mean, poor choice of what, words, and then what, not specifying which one was what brotherhood. What brotherhood is he yeah, referring to? That's, I don't know. I would have chosen well, maybe group, family. Like like um, we mentioned any, before. That is just a wrong word choice. We have... Uh, Get him at the source. The Bakhtiari brothers here from their respective NFL teams to talk a little NFL action. And one of the reasons I wanted to play that soundbite is it's clear from what Richie Incognito had to say is he's, he's gone off the deep end. You know, he's, he's not all there right now. And with the mess that happened with the Dolphins this year, I'd really love to hear, David, how your first year in the league was, what you experienced in the locker room as a rookie. I know the NFL's caught some flack for what rookies have to do when they first get in the league. So I just love to hear some insight into what happened with you your rookie year, and then maybe after Eric, you could talk about what your experiences were like inside an NFL locker room. I mean, Eric's been everywhere, you know, pretty much half the league, so he's got stories for days. You know, and he always makes jokes, cracks jokes, and I have to laugh at those. I mean, um, from where I've been. You know, the Packers, they're pretty good. Uh, you know, I'd love to uh, talk shit about a bunch of my offensive linemen, but uh, they're actually kind of good guys at the end of the day. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, there's no uh, Richies over there and stuff like that. Well, I mean, even if there are, I wouldn't tell you guys. Uh, but <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Uh, yeah. There we go. Um, they, uh, like, ba basically, I, I do normal rookie duties, um, which include basically being uh, – a very high class work called it. Like I was basically their secretary. David, go get me socks. Okay. <laughs> David, go get me a muscle milk. All right. Um, and then I had like the official duties were like I needed to have dip on me for the first half of the year from when I got there to the middle of the year until I got switched over to another guy. I always had to have dip on me for every single offense lineman there with dip they wanted. And I had it on me all the time. So it was either pouches or, you know, long cut. I mean, you can name an offense lineman. I could still remember which uh, dip you wanted. So I had to do that. Um, I had to bring waters every day. Me and the, the rookies included, we had to bring waters every day, line them up perfectly to the corners of the desk right in the front of the room, and um, they had to be picked out because they said it ke keeps the coolness all together. You know, you let them separate, they're going to get warm. We like them cool. So um, they come in there and knock them over sometimes. We had to put them right, pick them right back up, no questions asked, and then it always had to be brought taken from the backside because they needed to look formal. So... Anyone took water from the front, you had to go up there and remove it and make sure it all looked, you know, organized. And it went from, it went waters to the G2, to the G, and then to the... You still know, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm still, I guess, technically a rookie, they said. Um, 
And then we had to do, we had a coffee guy, um, and then, so he had to make coffee every day, and uh, me and JC, since we were drafted, we had to buy uh, Keurigs for the room. And then the only other thing, besides, you know, doing the whole secretary thing, is we had rotated on away games to buy food for the veterans, so we, on all, like, traveling games, you know, sometimes they want uh, chilies or Chipotle or uh, Jimmy John's. I mean, thankfully, there's not really, you know, a bunch of five-star uh, restaurants in Green Bay. I mean, it's pretty much you got Chili's, Chipotle, Applebee's, uh, you know, have a whole lot, you know. Are you, are you what, an about, what about Rogers restaurant? And it's not in Green Bay. It's not Green Bay? No. Is it Milwaukee? Is that what that is? I do actually have a good story about Aaron. Aaron actually wanted a burger from Five, five Guys, and I literally had 30 minutes to get on the plane. <laughs> and I'm rushing, and I could not get his burger. And coming from a rookie, you're going to have to be like, all right, I'm going to have to text Aaron and tell him I can't get his burger, and not to go up to him and tell him I don't have any food for him. I texted him that, and all he texted back was K. And then I got on the plane, and he's looking at me, and then uh, he's giving me a stare, and then walks up. He goes, where's my food? I'm like, I told you I couldn't get it. He goes, well, you didn't think in your head that you'd want to get Chipotle then for me? I'm like, well... You said you wanted a five guys burger, and I couldn't get that, so I didn't know you didn't. I don't know what you want from Chipotle. And he looked at me, and goes, "What you got? What you get?" I'm like, "I mean, I got this. Do you want it?" And he goes, "No." <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was kind of a hard pill to swallow. I was like, "Oh God, I just ruined my only chance to be cool with Aaron." <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing worse than a Texas as K. Yeah, that is just yeah. oh man, that is brutal. The Guy, big, big, girl, yeah, quarterback, exactly. oh, yeah. Yeah, you your mother. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you you knew it was K, You're in so yeah. much trouble. Oh, yeah. She's pissed. You're in the friend zone. It's just none of it's good. Yeah, just capitalized too. Just K. P- <laughs> K period. Yo, yeah. Oh, K period. Yeah. One yeah. period or three. No, no, one. Oh, because K, K, K with three means yeah. that they were expecting more to respond. Yeah, 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 K yeah. period means yeah. this conversation's over. <laughs> yeah. And so is whatever and is we this, were. Is this yeah. mustache Aaron Rodgers or non-mustache Aaron Rodgers at the time? Oh, that's actually like a are, fair question. I, I think like that was different. mustache Aaron Rodgers. Oh, yeah. it's hard, it, oh. is it, was it hard, seriously, though, was it harder to take him seriously with the mustache than it was... Dude, he rocks a pretty serious yeah, mustache. That, that, yeah. that lip sweater commands respect. Yeah. Is, he, I mean, is he funny in the huddle? What's he like in the huddle? Is he, he's cracking jokes? I know, he, he's, he's serious and he's like... He actually is kind of quiet, um, and I kind of got to lean in there and like hear him. I do love like he, when he talks. He usually generally talks to the left side to like, kind of make us hear some stories. And the right side, he almost like said my like they're always like mother effing us because they're like he only talks to you, you guys. We can never hear anything. And then you can't really tell Aaron that he's doing it wrong because usually at any time, even if it is Aaron's fault, it will never be his fault. It's kind of like the rule of thumb <laughs> with us. Like you some, ever, you ever go up to the line being like, "Shit, I, I didn't hear what the play was." Like I'm just gonna, you know, like hopefully this works out. Like, <laughs> no, I'll be, I'll be screaming at Josh. Sometimes I'll have a brain fart. I'll be screaming at Josh. Like, do what am I doing? And like he almost, will, he get, gets pissed off. He's like, that's where he comes, you know, starts screaming about this whole rookie. This rookie. He goes, I, I gotta worry about your ass. No one the hell to go. I gotta worry about my guy. I gotta block it. You're over there. For, what's the play? Where are we going? What are we doing? And this is all within like five seconds, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like you yeah, guys got, obviously yeah. the play clocks running, you know, like yeah, well, high strong situations. You got. You. It's like in Dumb and Dumb where he lights himself on fire. Just give me the damn number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know. I remember there was one play that Aaron, if you were around the Packers for a while, you'd know the check, but I'm a rookie and. He didn't tell us that it, he was going to start changing lingo during the week. So in the game, he starts saying the stuff. And and I was been fooled before because he said some things and then I tried to react off it. And he goes, that has nothing to apply to you. So when I hear something I don't... He was saying some garbage things just trying to exactly. check the so, line. So, you, thought, you thought it was something So when was... I hear something that I don't know that we didn't practice lingo, I'm like, okay, that has nothing to do with me. And then he comes up to me on the sideline and he goes, that would have been a touchdown. What were you doing? And I said, I was doing the play. He goes, no, I said this. And I'm like, what the hell? Or it didn't say hell. I said... <laughs> You know, I'll say, I said, what the fuck does that mean? And then he goes, I do you know I talked about this. I'm like, oh, no, no, you're right. You're right. All right. You, you did talk about this to yourself, but not to us, but it's my fault. I, I, I take responsibility. And he goes, good. Well, well, <laughs> I'm like, well, now I know. Guys have so now I never mess it up. You know? Yeah. It's just well, kind of how it is. He definitely does have a kind of a lighter side, I guess. I mean, I, I've seen the picture of the selfies before every game. Or the, not, sorry, it's not selfies, the uh, photo bombs. Yeah, no, he is, he's a character. But I mean, like, he doesn't really mess around in the huddle. I mean, sometimes he'll mess, he, sometimes he likes to joke around, uh, um, when he's uh, signaling plays, uh, he likes to be very vulgar with them and <laughs> kind of joke. But uh, I mean, he, I mean, he's he's a businessman at the end of the day out there. Tell him, tell him that uh, that one story about. Uh, he's like probably most. In, he's one of the, like I'd say top five most competitive people I know. The the, the very the, the in the huddle one where he told the whole line to do something and then he goes not you. Oh, uh, where he singled you out. 
So this is actually a really good story. Yeah. You know we're going right off topic. It's unsportsmanlike conduct, so we don't really give a fuck. But we know <laughs> what this topic is. Um, so we have a play. Um, f- you know this is week two, week three. It's fourth down against Cincinnati, and he tells me basically to cut, and I can't cut anyone to save my life, and I'm working on it, but I'm terrible. So I miss my dude. I mean, I, I, think I saw ca- kind of kind of get him. I end up you know I end up getting fined for it too somehow. But uh, he ends up knocking the ball down. Yeah, that's um, what. Game over. Aaron's looking at me, scolding me. I'm like, "Fuck, man!" I'm like, "Ah, whatever." Then you know, fast oh, forward. Oh, yeah, well, whatever. Like, I mean, I, I I felt terrible. Shattered dreams. Yeah, I mean, it was like it was like a little kid. I felt terrible like, for it. Ostrich, you put your head in the sand. Yeah, I put my, I, about yeah, it, put then my head in the sand. You know, you're a man. You got over. Yeah, but I'm, I, mean, I talk to these people that are listening. I had to make myself look manly. Yeah, Anyways. manly is not getting give, give, give a fuck. It's not manly. It's not accountable. <laughs> so then, fast forward to the. Uh, Chicago game, you know, this is to get us into the playoffs, and uh, it's fourth down again, and Aaron gives us the cut call, and then literally, as soon as he says it, he turns and looks at me, stares at me for two seconds, and goes, and then points and goes, you, stay up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then in my mind, I'm like, he is thinking about freaking Cincinnati, <laughs> dude, I swear. So the play happens, we end up getting the first down, end up winning the game, cold tub, I'm sitting there with Josh, we see Aaron walk by, we, hey, Aaron, come over here, and goes... Hey, uh, I'm not playing when you told me to stay up. What are you thinking about Cincinnati? He goes, hell yeah, I was thinking about Cincinnati. I'm not going to let you ruin the game twice. <laughs> He's like, I'm not going to let you ruin the season. Yeah. <laughs> you, ever, you ever worry about that plays like Cincinnati? Obviously, don't go your way. You know, you're you're a rookie. You're starting. Just like those kind of plays ever get in your head where you start worrying? Or it's just like you just have to find a way to block it out? Like How do you, how do you stay mentally strong when, <clears throat> when certain plays like that can can easily kind of disrupt your mental fortitude? Go Fido. Ahead. I learned that from one of my coaches in college. It means fuck it, drive on. Kick, kick guys' ass one play, period, next play's over. You get at your ass be one play, period, next play. Like, K you, period. You, yeah, you can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, K, K period. Basic K period. Eric, what about you? I mean, you had you spent a, a good amount of time moving around to different teams. I'm sure you've had some, some pretty uh, memorable experiences in the league. I mean, nothing, I'm not driving into any specific subject right now, but anything uh, off what David said that brings up some funny stories that you might. Uh, there was this one play it was in 2012 during training camp and all the outside linebackers for 49ers were hurt and I was running with the first team and we were going against the first offense it was fourth it was fourth and short and so I was on Justin Smith's side and we were doing a blitz where I was coming off the edge and I have but I have to keep outside contain and there's a call that you make that I didn't know because I was always second and third string and then Justin gives it to me, and I'm like, "What the hell does that mean?" He goes, "He goes, he goes. You just go down the line, go down the line." So, I like basically have to come behind him, and he takes my responsibility. And it happens no matter what, and it happens fast. Well, I I thought it only happened if like a certain like block happens, like a down block or whatever. And we're walking back to the huddle, and we 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 made the stop because they ran away from us. But he goes, "You're supposed to go now. You're supposed to cross my face now." I'm like. Like my basic, like, he's like, don't worry about it. Just don't fuck it up next time. And he slaps my ass. And Cowboy's like six five, like two eighty five, like pure <laughs> muscle. This dude, I swear, I went to the shower and I had a hand mark all over my ass. Like, I literally felt like I was a five year old kid getting spanked by his dad. <laughs> it hurt so bad. He so, is a beast. He's a beast. Getting spanked by him compared to actually trying to block. And what was it like playing? I mean, you? Your first game. <laughs> your first game as a pro, David. You're tasked with Alden Smith and Justin Smith in your home stadium. I mean, that must have been. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Uh, it was fun. What yeah, were what were you and that. you and Alden getting into in that in that playoff game? You looked pretty pissed off. Uh, we were just talking about recipes. He's a really good cook, and <laughs> he just really like had this said something about this tiramisu that he made with a special ingredient. Like, adds this extra egg yolk. I mean, it's unbelievable. That's so. what's going on out there, right? That's what's being said. And you just didn't agree with that extra egg yolk. Yeah, just what's your concerns? I just was I was really concerned about the yeah. egg yolk. I was wondering if that's gonna rupture. You know the uh, how it you know basically like when when he cooks it. I don't want to ruin the whole recipe. It's a really good. I loved everything else he said. Like, you know the sugars and uh, whatnot. But I mean, something about that egg yolk really was kind of grinding my gears. But I do, I do want to say is we need to get this. Tell them about these nuts. Oh, that was my favorite story. Yeah. So like, I, like I said, story. he's my brother's. You know, he's been around the league. He's heard all these things, and uh, I guess I'm gonna take your guys' job right here. I'll go for um, it. <laughs> easier on and, me. And he basically prepped me a lot for the league. And here, all the <clears throat> dark things, this, that, and the other. You know, it's really prepared me. But also, you have to hear about the funny sides. And this story right here is awesome. Rob Ryan. 
He was defensive coordinator in 2010 for the Cleveland Browns. You want to play for this guy. Great coach, great lettuce, just solid, <laughs> solid head of hair. And I walk in there, and he's like, all right, guys, we got a new guy here. Um, you want to introduce yourself? I'm like, Eric Bakhtiari, uh, University of San Diego. He's like, where'd you go to college? I'm like, that's my third year in the league. I'm like, uh, University of <laughs> San Diego? Like, he's like, okay. You're, uh, I'm in the defensive like meeting room. It's all defense. He's like, so did you play offense or defense in college? I was like, uh, I played defense. He goes, but what's the abbreviation for defense? I'm like, <laughs> D. And he has these bag of nuts on his desk called D's nuts. And as like simultaneously me saying D, he takes the bag holds it over his dong, starts flapping, he goes, these nuts! <laughs> and, like, everyone starts cracking up. And every new guy that came in after me, he would, like, do some variation or permutation of making them say the word D, and he would do the exact same thing. And, <laughs> and it was so much funnier when it didn't happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually really appreciate it. Like, well, uh, you, like, you, like, you scared to laugh when that happened? You, no, you, you laugh at yourself. You're like, ah, oh, how funny. But it's actually a lot funnier when you're witnessing it, not the first person subjective. Eric, I know you got another story you've been uh, holding holding on to for us. Uh, a funny story, actually. When I went to, I got cut by the 49ers in 2010, and then I got signed like the very next day by uh, <clears throat> the Dolphins. And I went in Jeff Ireland's office, and like. I've heard some interesting things about Jeff Ireland. Ah, uh, well, we'll see where this story ranks. Or if it, <laughs> it's just a microcosm. He, my you know, I'm a practice squad player. It's like my third team of the year. And he brings me into his office. Mm -hmm. He ends up cutting me four days later. So, this was, it, 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 the fact that he went through this trouble was just mind-boggling to me. He brings me up there and he's asking me questions about my character. And I'm like, yo, my rap sheet speaks for itself. You know, I've you can ask anyone else. You're well connected in the NFL. Like you know what type of character I am. He wanted me, he wanted to know like if my parents were still together, like if they were divorced, if I had, if I had troubles at home, and this is on the heels of when he was asking Des Bryant if his mother was a yeah. I was gonna say he, like he, he's he's the one that yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. His mother, if his mom was so a I'm like yeah. So, anyways, he goes. He then draws the southern tip of Florida, and he puts a little dot. He's like, "Do you know what that dot is?" I'm like. Geographically, I'm assuming that's Miami. He's like, yes. And he drew a line above it. Or no, then he drew another dot above it. And he goes, do you know what that is? I'm like, that's, I'm like, no. He's like, that's Fort Lauderdale. That's where we are. And he drew a line in between the two dots. And he goes, you don't cross this line. There's trouble down there in Miami. You stay in Fort Lauderdale. I was like, okay, sir. I don't, I don't go out. I don't drink anyways. So you don't got to worry about that. And I was... It was just really weird that he wasted so much time on someone who did so and this little. Was, was this before you were signed or after? No, this is after I was signed. Another crazy little story that uh, that happened over, well, not over the weekend, I guess in the, in the last week, um, probably hanging out with Richie Incognito at the moment, is uh, one of the athletes at the combine. Adam Uema. Adam, Adam Uema? Muema. Adam Uema. He was uh, com State. competing, running back for San Diego State, competing at the combine when uh, God intervened. <laughs> told him uh, <laughs> that he was going to be a Seattle Seahawk and there was no point in uh, continuing to uh, showcase his skills and compete at the Combine, and he uh, immediately left. He was There was a picture of him that showed up on Twitter of him still in his Combine gear on the plane flying out of Indianapolis. So good luck to Adam. I hope he lands with the Seahawks. Everything you know goes according to plan for him. But on that note, I think it brings up kind of like a bigger issue, and Tommy touched on this based on your thoughts, but I mean the pressures of the combine, you know, I mean people's careers are on the line, a lot of money, shuffles places based on, you know, someone thinking they're going to go second round, next thing you know, they could be a fifth, sixth rounder, and I just, especially David, I want to get your thoughts, you know, you competed at the combine about the pressures of the combine and just how ridiculous did it get, I mean, what kind of questions are you being asked, or have you heard of players getting asked, or just, what are the things we don't know about the combine that we should know? Um, I mean, it looks good on TV, but it's really... It's not a fun place, but you feel like a. I tell people like get ready, you're gonna feel like a piece of meat. Like I remember being on a table, and having like five doctors just poking and grabbing. Like, I literally had at one point, at least one doctor to a limb and pulling and twisting my legs and arms. Um, I'm in my spandex, walking in front of all these people, like walking on a stage, like up to like a like scale. Miss America. It's just, it was, yeah, it, 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 it was like the fat boy camp of Miss America. Uh, like walking up on stage, um, 
like they had like an announcer like you go up to like this uh, hype thing in front of everyone and then he screams out like these numbers like six zero four two. Um, I mean it was it was definitely it's it's very it, you could be perceived as degrading but I mean it, they, at the end of the day they are trying to get the bare naked facts and they make it the system I guess that works for them um, and I mean we're up at like five o'clock. Every yeah, that, morning. That's another thing I heard is that you're literally on. Yeah, like you guys see a couple very little bit night. of what actually goes on. Like behind the scenes is like 80% of it, no, 90%. And then what you guys see is about 10%. And um, what else can I do? What'd you, what'd you clock in at the 40 at, dude? Uh, I was 501. Is that, how was that uh, compared to your uh, fellow brethren? Slow? Slower? Yeah. Slowest? Slowest. Yeah, where, where did you guys run it in? I went, I went 469 on my pro day. He's packing a little more weight, though. What do we, we got? Ah, he was 299. I was 267. It's 22, 32 pounds. Yeah. 32 pounds. Andrew, what, you're 475? 475 was, was, was my fastest. What kind of... What kind of... you weigh 185? No, no, no. I, no, I was up to 230, 230 by then. <laughs> what kind of what kind of questions they ask you? Uh, weird ones. Um, Any- I remember in a room, this guy was like... It was really weird. It was a like guy over like this counter... Like, like all you see is his eyes staring at you. It's like, it's like, like, a, like, like home improvement. Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess, I guess, I guess I can say what team was. It was, it was the Giants, and everyone was in there. Like Tom Coughlin, you know, I'm talking to him, and like everyone's around there, and there's just one dude, his eyes. So I guess he's like trying to like read me and like see how he's gonna react. And then they're asking me a bunch of questions. And all of a sudden, like randomly goes, "Do you own a gun?" And I said yes. And I swear, everyone really sat back, and I was like. What's wrong with it? I mean, because I guess everyone you know, nowadays I guess freaks out being in New York and yeah, after the yeah, flex go thing and the, their incidents. And I just remember that guy like just over the counter was like the weirdest thing. So, that. so let, let's out? just let's just make sure that uh, we got this correctly. So there's a everyone's asking you questions. There's a guy with his face behind a counter and only his eyes are visible. He was like a crocodile, human crocodile, alligator eyes, <laughs> alligator and eyes. he's staring. He's staring directly <laughs> at you with his yes, eyes. Yes, not, not moving. Like alligator alligator eyes. Alligator. not moving. Alligator. Alligator. And how long how long was this going on for? Uh, the full 15 minutes of the official. And he's just staring at you. And he asked, he asked you just one question. No, he didn't ask anything. Uh, was, so he's a, his job is just to stare. Yeah, I guess like Tom Coughlin was asking the normal question, and all of a sudden some dude from the left just popped out the question. I guess just to catch me you off. you get any other uh, funny instances you guys ever hear about? Yeah, I mean, I, I know I know some buddies. Like, uh, my buddy got asked like um, if he likes uh, if he likes girls or basically like a, a question if he is in a leading guy. question so if, he loaded question, if he was gay. Um, Nick Casa. Yeah, that was one. Um, I really didn't get. I mean, they asked me if I had a gun. They've asked me. Um, I mean, a lot more like football oriented. They asked me, you know, center ones like, "Are you a leader?" This, that, the other. Like, oh, I, I didn't get too many like, you know, uh, curveballs. Um, just some situ- situations like some guy asked me if I was like. Um, he, he just told me like like you, you seem like you seem like a fairy. You seem very ditzy. Like, like you seem soft. Like he, he, he kept me on the bush. My, I'm like, what? what do you, 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 so, you, you think, think I'm scared? Like, yeah. He's like, no, no. What are you supposed to do me, in that situation? You, you supposed to be? Because yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, he's, he's trying to ask me. He goes, he goes, are you tough? Like that, that's why I wonder at the end of the day, are you tough? I'm like, I mean, I could look, I could look, I, I could look like a fairy, like, yeah. like you know, just in like a, a tutu, and tell you I'm the toughest man in the world. You know, I could say that. It doesn't have to hold any merit. It's like go look at film. I mean, you're the scout. Talk like Tarzan, play like James. Yeah, you know. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. While we're on the um, the subject of coaches, there's been some obviously some craziness with the whole Jim Harbaugh to Cleveland thing in the in the last couple of weeks. And um, Eric played for Jim Harbaugh at USD when he was starting out his coaching career. So Eric got the uh, the early Jim Harbaugh, the um, the less refined Jim. The Harbaugh. less refined Jim Harbaugh. Not to say he's necessarily at his uh, most refined <laughs> stage right now. Oh, it's but, a lot um, better than it used to be. I'll tell let's you that get, I would love to hear some insight both on Jim Harbaugh as a coach when you were under him and what you know about the current situation and just what, what, who is Jim Harbaugh? That's that's the question. <laughs> Probably Jim, burning everybody. Jim home. Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh wears cleats. <laughs> who <while> is Jim? <laughs> <He does. laughs> that, that's what I know, and that's what, that's, that's, what, that's what really grinds that's, my gears. <laughs> who is James Harbaugh? He is a fin- the best coach I've ever been around. And, you know, maybe there's a couple I haven't been around, like the Belichicks and things like that, who are as good, if not better. But in my playing career and from my subjective, it's Jim Harbaugh. 
and I, I love him to death. You know, we kind of started our careers together. So, you know, let me say that first. Now, in college, he was a psychopath. He did some of the most odd and strange and fucked up things that, like, logically you cannot wrap your head around. Uh, and so, but we won, and that was the whole reason. And we became better football players. Well, kinda, and, can you talk about any of these things? Or these, uh, I mean, if I, we completely understand if they're, they're no, 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 no. He, he, uh, he <clears throat> we. Were, so we're doing conditioning one day, and we have this huge hill in San Diego, Andrew Harbaugh. Mm-hmm. It's called Harbaugh's Hill. Te- Tecolote Hill, but, but we've we've dubbed it the Harbaugh Hill. It's right by uh, Manchester Field, where we practiced every day. Yeah, and it's, and it's it's like a it's like a ha- half mile run out to the actual hill. Yeah, from the field, from mm-hmm. the practice field, is half mile run there, and this thing's straight up. And if you, it takes a full minute if you sprint it up. Yeah. And it's all uphill. And it's the hardest thing ever. Like one and done. So Harbaugh has this great idea. Like, you know what? We're going to take this hill down today. And we're not going to go there and just run one. We're going to run like four quarters of football. <laughs> so not only do we run over there, but then we're doing like group sprints. So you mark down into like eight groups, basically by position or by speed. And you have to sprint up it. And he has a guy filming it because he wants to see like how certain guys run and react to like you know, when they're tired and who quits and all this stuff. And he has this great idea. Like he's fuck it. He's going to run with us. And on the second one full stride, he turns over his left shoulder and pukes all over himself (laughs) and does not break stride, (laughs) does not break stride. And all he does is get up to the top, take off the windbreaker, walk down and did it again. So that's kind of, and that's, that's what we call that's, Harbaugh's that's Hill. That's a marks of a great coach right there. Yeah, that, so that's why we call it Harbaugh's Hill. And, I mean, and that great, just kind of... Great great coach, psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very thin the, line. The, the, the fine yeah. line. Like our dad, genius. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. Genius or insane. It's Love you, dad. A fine, a fine line. But um, what do you, I mean, I know you might have a little insight into like, what the hell's going on right now? Because I feel like a lot of it's the media blowing out of proportion. There's definitely some strong negotiations going on between the Niners and and his camp and obviously they're pulling each other's chains a little bit but what do you what I mean I know you know a little bit about what's going on with this the situation in my opinion of what I think is going on I think Cleveland came to the 49ers and said they, they said you know we're willing to offer these things and these things but you need to sign right now because we have a deal in place with this other coach and the 49ers are the 49ers and the Cleveland Browns the Cleveland Browns the 49ers are going to be strong armed so they basically told them to go fuck themselves and the media caught wind of it and while yes like Harbaugh's trying to get a new contracts so those agents are playing that up and I think it's no surprise that Balky and Harbaugh you know butt heads because there's a lot of you know ego or you know wants for you know Harbaugh wants his guys in there and you know Balky wants his guys in there and there's just, you know, a lot of, maybe a lot of tension because, you know, any good working relationship, you're going to have disagreements, but, you know, with two volatile people. What's, I, it's got to frustrate you guys to see this stuff. I know, David, you had a few funny stories about media trying to spin things you had said and even, you know, with Aaron, the locker room and that kind of thing. But just, it's sad that we've come to a point where there's just people who just want to get their name out there, get a story out there, and we just can't actually get anything with substance. At least in my opinion. Honestly, I'm guilty of doing that. I did that this year. So, <laughs> I guess I guess you can blame me. I did that to, um, I don't want to get into it. But I, I, yeah. did, I did do that once, and uh, I, I, think I, I think it was okay. It's a, it's a lust uh, for attention, just like girls have lust for likes. That's why they take slutty selfies. It is. You know? these, these stories, so the, these the, stories. The media is basically taking selfies. Yeah, me, selfies. media is trying to take a selfie. ESPN <laughs> is the... Is the Epitome of the it's a selfie. First let me take duck a selfie. Face. They take duck face. Yeah, they, they, duck yeah, face they invented the duck face selfie. Duck face cleavage <laughs> selfie. Yeah. Okay. Duck well, then, then tell me if I was out of line when I did this. Okay. So we're, we're, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna talk about it. On a scale, of, on a scale of one to selfie, how selfie is this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So basically, the um, Chargers were playing a game right before they're they're about to head to to Denver to play them a second time, and Mike McCoy was on the stand, and he was getting badgered about. You know, I, I, you you guys almost beat them last time. Is that good enough for you? You know, is that a a big thing? And he said, I don't know, he didn't mean it like this, but it came out. We're not going to Denver, you know, just to be competitive. And then a couple sentences later, he said, we're going to Denver to win. We're gonna win. And oh man, you wrote the story. We're and not going to Denver so to beat, and you did I just took that clip. Oh. And so after he leaves the room, 
I, I was talking with the guys and I was talking with my cameraman. And I'm like, we just got to use that. Him saying we're going to Denver, we're going to so win. You right? put the headline. So out. yeah, and so then the, the guy from I'm the guy. Head. I might have to get a new car. The guy from NBC <laughs> is yelling at me saying, you can't do that. You can't do that. And I said, I'm going to do it if I want. <laughs> um, and so that eventually got to the point where they made me they made me cover it later. But I thought I thought that would have been fair. Well, I don't know. That's not fair. It is fair. He said, we're going to Denver and we're going to win. That's not t- – you're taking it completely out of context. Not necessarily. That's like – I don't know. I, I, well, 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 was, in, in, in all fairness, if you're going to do that, then – I'm just gonna make sure not to have her have an interview with you. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's no, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't think. Like that. <laughs> he said the word Aaron. He said gay. He said is. Yeah, we'll just splice so it all together. We'll just put that all together. Yeah. Because yeah. that's like saying. That's, that's like no, saying. No, I did like, not say that. I just want to go on record. I never did say that. <laughs> that's like <laughs> that's like taking a quote that says like Tommy Morris is a good guy, but he just murdered someone, and just saying you know Tommy Morris murdered someone. Yeah, or Tommy is a good guy. Yeah, I was leaving out the murder. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's like we'll talk about this. Hey, time I mean, I'm, we, you know, I might we have I have some issues with what went on there, and I'm not so proud that you, <laughs> you just did that. But um, wow, I'm uh, not very proud of my co-host <laughs> right yeah. now. And you know what? I needed I needed something. I needed something. So I I mean I get. Was it necessarily the best thing to do? No, but it didn't really cause a circus or anything, so I don't feel bad about it. Sorry, I won't let I, anything happen yeah. from... It's like when someone around. clicks a link that says that and you think you're going to get something juicy and then you see the whole context of it and everyone's yeah, like, then, yeah. ESPN's you know? yeah. king at that, of how they phrase oh, yeah. it. It's like a hand job. It's like, it's like you could do something so much more. Yeah, no, I'll, this, give, I'll, give you God, I'll give you a prime example of me. I'll give you a prime example. Like um, what, what's her name? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Pam Oliver. Pam Oliver, you know, she makes the uh, article that goes freaking big saying that I forced my way back on the field, that I was pushing doctors out of my way. Where I David's mean, referring to during, during, during the yeah. Niners-Packers yeah. playoff yeah. game. Yeah. During, what we're talking about during the Niners-Packers playoff game, David got hit on a play and was taken out and tried to come back in, and all the media reports were saying that he had a concussion that he forced his way back well, into the game. So that's what David She – she, she made it seem like I had like pulled a knife and was like stabbing people to get back on the field and like you ripping like, foaming out. from the mouth. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean to to, this, you to don't be you back exactly in, like 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 what I mean. It's just it is very true and it makes me seem like a badass and and I'm just really happy she left out the best parts of me like I know I punched Mike McCarthy in the head and I had the face to get back on the field that's exactly what happened but she didn't she left that part out no I mean yeah yeah it was like great part this game no I mean like but it was just very uh it, it, it blew up to a point where, I mean like I wasn't pushing anyone you know it, it wasn't anything beyond that those means I'm not gonna go into detail on them because I'm not supposed to talk about it, but I'm just saying it was definitely not how it was blown up, and I'd laugh about it. And I think it's very funny how a media can get something to go so viral based on you know one act, and then you spin a couple adjectives to make it seem like another act. Well, it makes you feel any better. There's a great video of Pam Oliver getting smoked in the head by a ball. I uh, so you awesome. can just watch that over and yes. over. Yeah, put that so, on your mind. Yeah. Well, no, I, 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 there's no, no discredit in Pam Oliver. I'm just saying, you know, that's. Yeah, you don't, want to, you don't want to burn that bridge. No, no, no not, <laughs> yet, not yet. Let me let me say something just to clear it up. She put the emphasis on the player. And that's not right because as a player, what happens in situations like that is the communication is vertical and it, it's not always seamless. So when he gets cleared to go back in play or he's not cleared to go back into play, like that needs to be communicated to the special teams coach, position coach, and eventually the head coach, but it mo- immediately the people who are looking for the, the guys, that need, the squads that need to be on the field. So like the special teams coach. And things like that aren't relayed and if they're calling like David Bakhtiari, like, I need to know if David can go in. I need to know if David can go in. And there isn't somewhat their buffer system, which is the like head athletic trainer saying he cannot go back in. Of course, as a player and as a competitor, like everyone here, like you're, you're gonna, gonna back in. you're gonna go back in the game yeah. until they Just, in, until they physically remove until, your yeah. Head. And, 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 until your head I'm, coach I'm not I'm not a neurologist. I don't know if I have been concussed or not. I mean, even if I am, if I have concussed at the point in time, how the hell am I supposed to know about concussed? What do they do with the concussion, concussion test? Will they ask you or do they have like? Well, they ask you to count to three. Uh, <laughs> what country you're in? If you're ABC, it's, all it's so stupid. It's all elementary. Like, what 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 play is it? Where are well, you? The only reason I'm asking is because I've obviously had a lot of concussions, and I'm just wondering if they up the you have. the questions in the NFL if they're more trivial. You know, like I mean, how, how they, tough are the questions versus like mine was how many fingers do I have? You know, so like how, you know, like I want to know if they like. St- I mean, up a lot you, you can talk to the concussion ex- expert. Which oh is yeah, brother. I mean, but I mean, I know the question they asked me was like, all right, say the. 12 months backwards starting with January. Because I don't know if I could do that. Oh, right I couldn't now. do that right now. I could not. I mean, like, well, I'm going to be honest. I, they, I did that. I answered all correctly. They asked me, um, what play was it when I got hurt? I told them what I told, and they asked me what happened. I tell them what happened. Did you black out? No, I didn't black out. 
what uh and then the, this is like where i was like why it's in my mind i'm like i feel fine they asked me well what uh what's the time in the game without looking at the clock i'm like well we got the ball with 13 minutes left 13 minutes left to go in the fourth quarter and i'm assuming it's about a four minute drive because we got right down to the end zone and then i got hit so i'm assuming you know what's 13 minus uh what do you say it's three minutes say three minutes four minutes nine four. eight yeah. nine ten minutes left in the game and he's like oh you know, it's good critical thinking. Arithmetic. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, and I, like I said, I am not a neural. I'm not a, I don't study the brain, so I don't know if I'm concussed or not. And that's their job. Just like they don't tell me how to block a player I, or how to play football. It's two sides of the coin. So, I'm like, look, you guys get paid to tell me if I'm concussed. I get paid to play. The right, rest well. you can talk to my agent, Mark Humanic. <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate you guys hanging out in here, giving us some uh, inside look at the NFL. What do you? One last thing, um, draft wise, what do you? What would you like to see Packers pick up come come April? Or Ooh, May? yeah, that's good. Uh, two yeah. things: one, a Super Bowl yeah. contending player. Nice. That's credit. the answer. For credit. That's that's credit. That is credit. It's not um, in the draft. He's a free agent. Dante Whitner, best team I've had. I thought you were gonna say yeah. you. Best teammate you've had. <laughs> yeah, Dante Dante Whitner. Best team I've had. What, what, makes, he's a, he's what makes a hitter? Him, he deserves it. He hits. Him, what makes him the best teammate you've had? He's just such a professional. Um, you know, and he, he the way he coaches guys top to bottom, the way he goes about his business, he's a professional to a T. Um, he takes his craft so seriously. Takes notes, brings the young guys along with him. He'll coach anyone. He'll coach a guy like me. He'll help me out with and something you don't, you he don't sees long. see that from a lot of players. In the no, league. and he, 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 like I heard a story about LeBron James. Like he would just ask... Ray Allen, even though LeBron James is the best player on the planet, he would ask Ray Allen why he was looking outside of an airplane one time. Just he wants to know why to everything, and and people credit LeBron for being like the best teammate like in the world. And I think I've never played with LeBron James, obviously, but like I played with Dante Whitner, and I I see a lot of those characteristics that I've heard about LeBron James has. I think Dante has those, and I think it would be awesome for someone like my brother because I know he'd get some. Like valuable things that I got from Dante, even though they're opposite sides of the ball, I know that his just like his professionalism and his like leadership would permeate like to my brother, and I think that'd be a big thing for him. Dave, have you had anyone like that in your first year that you felt was like who was the most helpful for you? I guess. Um, I mean Josh, he's played six years. Uh, I mean we definitely have you know our fine line. You know he does help me with football. There's some things he's like, don't follow me, don't do this. I mean, he is, he is kind of a – Josh is a one-of-a-kind, and he's a definitely different. But, I mean, the aspects of certain things, you know, that he does in football and, you know, certain things about being a pro, um, follow him. Then I'd say a lot of things I fall under. My buddy Nate Solder um, from the Patriots, of course, my brother. And then – Brothers. Uh, Brothers. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean when, – Cooper, when, when, Cooper's still here. Yeah, when, when, when Andrew decides <laughs> to talk to me. Um, and then uh, the other person, Clay, is also – he's a very Clay good – he leads by example. I mean, I don't think – he, he's more of a he, – like, he likes to lead more by example than by his words. So I, I, I would accumulate those people uh, into kind of where I kind of base my uh, – My professionalism, how I want to play ball. Yeah, your little sidekick in you. Hmm? That's little buzzwords. Hey, actually, Cooper. yeah, I, I I called David whenever I, I get a chance to hear one of his interviews or, or his radio show that he does out in Green Bay. I call him and I and I give him tips. You know, hey, you know, you said you know a lot or you had a lot of um words to, f- to have some filler space. And I kind of just make sure that he's cognizant of the way that he speaks when when, when he wants to get into because he does want to have a future kind of like a Mark Schlereth esque. Uh, uh, have Mark be his mentor because Mark did it r- the right way. You know, was a huge professional in the field, have won Super Bowls, and then he transitioned seamlessly into the media business. And he actually is a an analyst that I really respect. And I know that David does too. Some great daughters too. Yeah. Oh, you did. Oh, I, I didn't even know that. See, good family man. What? Uh. So how did I do then? How'd, yeah. how'd, 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 how'd you do during this show? You we'll did play it back. We'll get the playback. Yeah. We'll you see, you we'll you did well. Did, um, did I say yes and no's? You did have a couple ums, but you did it to start off, and then as soon as you got kind of sprinting, you 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 kept your stride strong, and then I mean I, I, I mean you kept your stride strong. Yeah, yeah. I mean I, I sprint marathons. Simple as that. <laughs> Next question. Um. <laughs> you should say that. You should say that in a, in an interview. I sprint marathons. Yeah. Next question. Next question. Got, next question is key. Yeah. Okay. I would like to be a badass, but I mean I was just I was a little rookie kid. You know I just didn't know what I was doing. Power. Just trying to be. 
And I don't I, don't pay any riffs. I, I, we got to get you a head and shoulders ad. That's I'm telling you, the the shampoo is the way to go. There's I do have a beautiful head of hair. There's definitely been some ideas that I floated to, to David. I, I told him that him and Clay need to do. A, a a hair commercial where you know obviously uh, obviously <laughs> <laughs> obviously Clay, Clay Clay is Thor with with the golden locks. David has his, his brunette locks. What I'm Loki? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm he, the dickhead. You could be Loki, <laughs> yeah. the trickster. Got, yeah. They got they got a trickster. Did you see the second one? Davy Davy came bros again. Yeah, so I can kill him. Well, no, he doesn't kill him. He, well, I want to. Oh yeah. Hey, we obviously. know we know people. We can get this uh, this idea pitched. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. I don't know. Anyone. They come together. D- David's the offensive side. Well, after is, after your journalism incident, I don't know if yeah, I yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I'm, I'm done. Blacklisted, finished. <laughs> yeah. well, let's move on from that one. The <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate you guys coming in and joining us for one of our, the the intro episode on Sports Line. Took quite the hiatus, but um, definitely. Yeah, what took so long, dude? What took so, you know? Oh, we're just both very lazy. Was that it? <laughs> He's killing it tonight. That's that's Tommy Morris. Hey, hey, just, 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 just brushing off the cobwebs hey. here. I mean, if you guys were interested, you'd see. I mean, theoretically, I mean, he literally just dropped the mic right when he said that. He dropped it and then left. <laughs> what are you? I'm saying, just, just yeah, said yeah, it, said his quote, dropped yeah. the mic and walked out. But it's cool. I mean, you know, we're planning on this this going week after week. So Tommy's here week one. I'm not sure what we'll do week two, but <laughs> I'll be pretty much the filler. So yeah. like now, like where if he ever needs anyone, he's yeah, like in Tommy's dire need. I guess Tom, I have to jump back. What, on. what Tommy doesn't realize is tonight wasn't him co-hosting. This was an audition for right. the uh, the Boy, second right. spot, and we've got four people here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll be down to two next so week, I'm and then we'll make. Am I getting a rose next week? We'll make that's happening. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna come it's gonna be questionable. I mean obviously we have history, you right. know, that means something in the long run. <laughs> right. But um you know, people change and <laughs> it's not always for the good. So I'll have to evaluate. Sleep on it. We'll uh, we'll touch base next week. But Jeez. Um, can I text you? You might get a cat you might get a cat. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but yeah, David, obviously we want you to have a great season. Hopefully we'll talk to you before um for next season, you know, once you got your shampoo commercial all lined up, Andrew. Yeah, just, talk, just call my you. agent next time. Yeah. Yeah. We'll work on that too. <laughs> just, just if, work, they pay, if they pick up. We're, yeah. we're, we're working on being in front of cameras, just like you. You know, you start off. I know, front yeah, of if anyone's looking for a male model um, or a yoga instructor, Andrew's available. So yeah. uh, we'll put his picture up on the podcast. Trevor, too, I mean, that face for radio is just so beautiful. Yeah, that's why. It's, at least I know where my you know I know I know where I'm supposed to be. You're yeah. wasting you're wasting Andrew's gifts by putting on radio. You know, with no no visual. <laughs> if anything, YouTube. when when they play the podcast, just have a picture of Andrew without a shirt on. <laughs> yeah, that's hey, what you and, should yeah, do. Andrew, can we get a whole bunch of JPEGs? Well, we actually, oh, I already, yeah. I already yeah. have some gifs. I already yeah. have the. There's so for our listeners out there um, in the Boxyari's household, they have, um, they have, they each have a wall. They each have a wall with um, a wall of greatness. No, no, yeah. it's, it's not even a wall. It, it is a, is it a cabinet? Yeah, just it's like a um, it's kitchen. It's a labyrinth. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a labyrinth. They each have a little wall with pictures of you know their um, things they've done. There's a bunch of pictures of David. You know, my mom's very prideful. Yeah, David. You know, David in the league this year. Yeah, Eric's got some pictures too. Andrew used to have his like college pics, but now his his football pics are done, and there's pictures of him shirtless. And his male modeling shot. So uh, we're not kidding. I'll, I'll throw one up. In there. all of its glory, though. In all of its yeah. glory. He's, you, you you still get invites over to the house, which is good. What's what's your phone, ladies? His phone number is uh, six five zero. Uh, you should, come on, you should know this by heart. I do my head. They can cut the concussions. Wait, you got a concussion doing what? Trevor's an athlete. High school. High school I, I got one concussion. I got a I have a good excuse. I had Patrick, Patrick Wilson knee to the back of the head. What's your excuse again? Yeah. Public school helmets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, you know. PSA right there. No hey, hey, rock solid though. Yeah, rock solid. Yeah, rock solid. But yeah, we got to get out of here. We've, we've we've kept your guys' time long enough. But David, Andrew, Eric, thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week with another installment of Unsportsmanlike Conduct for Trevor Brew and Tommy Morris, the former, the former guys. <laughs> yeah, former <laughs> sportsmanlike. Potentially former. We'll be back next week with another installment. Join us then.